Subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon to never miss an update from Endeavor Careers. Hello and welcome to Endeavor's GK capsule for the month of July 2019. The month started with the presentation of union budget on 5th July and progressed with World Cup cricket final on 14th July. A lot of political drama was witnessed in Karnataka throughout the month. The month was brightened by the good news that came from the International Court of Justice in Kulbushan Jadav case, Chandrayaan launch and from sports where Hima Das created history. Let's look at these and other news highlights of the month. The first category is awards and recognitions. India's National Academy for Performing Arts, that is Sangeet Natak Academy, announced the names of four eminent artists for the prestigious Sangeet Natak Academy Fellowship. The artists named are Tabla Maestro Ustad Zakir Hussain, dancer Sonal Van Singh, dancer and choreographer Jatin Goswami, and Bharat Natyam Guru Kalyan Sundaram Pillai. The Sangeet Natak Academy Fellowship, also known as Academy Ratna Award, is a very coveted and rare honor as there are only 40 fellows at any given time. It is India's highest cultural award. Besides the fellowships, 44 other artists from the field of music, dance, theatre, folk and tribal music are also selected for Sangeet Natak Academy Awards for the year 2018. Some of the most famous award winners are Suresh Wadkar, Madhup Mudgal, Malini Avasthi, Narendra Singh Negi, etc. Indian batting legend Sachin Tendulkar has been inducted into the International Cricket Council's Hall of Fame. Joining Tendulkar in the Hall of Fame were famous South African pacer Alan Donald and two-time World Cup winning Australian cricketer and now coach Catherine Fitzpatrick. Sachin Tendulkar is regarded as the greatest batsman to have played the game along with Sir Donald Bradman and remains the top run-getter in both tests and one-day matches. He has scored 34,357 runs across formats and is the only batsman to have 100 international centuries under his belt. He is the sixth Indian cricketer to be inducted into the ICC Hall of Fame. Other Indians on the list are Bishan Singh Bedi, Sunil Gavaskar, Kapil Dev, Anil Kumble and Rahul Dravid. The next category is Persons in News. Christine Lagarde submitted her resignation as Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund in early July after her nomination to serve as the next President of European Central Bank. After an eight-year run as IMF's chief, Lagarde will now join as the first female president of European Central Bank. The European Central Bank is the central bank of the 19 European Union countries which have adopted Euro as their official currency. Its headquarter is in Frankfurt, Germany. Anshula Kant has been appointed as the new chief financial officer of the World Bank. She is the first woman to reach this position. Anshula Kant is currently serving as the Managing Director with State Bank of India. In her capacity as the CFO, she will be responsible for financial and risk management of the World Bank Group. She will report to the World Bank President, David Malpass. Anshula Kant is an economics graduate from Lady Shri Ram College and postgraduate from Delhi School of Economics. She joined SBI in 1983. In the past, she has served as the CFO of SBI as well. The union government made two key appointments in the intelligence agencies in this month. Senior IPS officer Samant Goel is appointed as the new director of RAW. RAW or Research and Analysis Wing is India's external intelligence agency. The appointment came three months after Samant Goel played a key role in India's counter-attack on the terror infrastructure in Pakistan's Bala Court. In another key development, government appointed senior IPS officer Arvind Kumar as the director of Intelligence Bureau. Intelligence Bureau, or IB, is India's internal intelligence agency. Arvind Kumar is an expert in the matters related to Kashmir. Both IPS officers are of the 1984 batch. 
Senior Congress leader and three-time Chief Minister of Delhi, Sheila Dixit passed away at the age of 81. Dixit was the longest-serving Chief Minister of Delhi. She headed the government for 15 years, from 1998 to 2013. She was the driving force behind several key infrastructural projects in the capital, including Delhi Metro. In 2013 state elections, Dixit was defeated in her New Delhi seat by Aam Aadmi Party leader Arvind Kejriwal, who replaced her as Delhi's chief minister. The next category is places in news. The walled city of Jaipur, also known as the Pink City for its trademark building color, made an entry in the list of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The historic walled city of Jaipur was founded in the year 1720 under the patronage of Savai Jai Singh II. With this inclusion, Jaipur has become the 38th Indian entry in the prestigious UNESCO list. Only China, Italy, Spain, Germany and France have more locations on the list than India. After the second meeting of officials on 15th July, Pakistan has announced that it will allow 5000 Sikh pilgrims per day to travel through Kartarpur corridor. The corridor, which was inaugurated in November last year, connects Gurudwara in Pakistan's Kartarpur with Dera Baba Nanak Gurudwara in Gurdaspur district in India. The corridor facilitates visa-free movement of Indian Sikh pilgrims to visit Kartarpur Sahib Gurudwara in Pakistan. The first batch of 500 Indian Sikh pilgrims has already reached Pakistan on 26th July through the corridor. These pilgrims are scheduled to start celebrations of the 550th birth anniversary of Baba Guru Nanak from his birthplace Nankana Sahib in Pakistan on 1st August 2019. In national news this month, in its judgment passed on 27th June, the Bombay High Court had upheld the validity of reservation granted to the Maratha community. In November last year, Maharashtra government granted 16% reservation to Maratha community in education and jobs under the socially and educationally backward class or SEBC category. The Bombay High Court has validated this decision but reduced the quota from 16% to 12% in education and 13% in jobs. The High Court bench comprised of Chief Justice Bharti Dangre and Justice Ranjit More had ruled that the state government has the right to raise the quota beyond the 50% limit under extraordinary and exceptional circumstances. The matter is now pending in the Supreme Court of India. The Parliament passed the National Investigation Agency Amendment Bill 2019 after a heated debate. While the government assured that the bill seeks to take tougher action against terrorism, the opposition parties called it an attempt to make India a police state. The National Investigation Agency or NIA was set up in 2009 in the wake of the Mumbai terror attack. It functions as India's premier agency to deal with terrorism related cases. The latest amendment introduced three major changes in the functioning of NIA. The first change is the type of offenses that NIA can investigate. The amendment enables NIA to investigate offenses related to human trafficking, counterfeit currency, illegal arms and cyber terrorism. The second change pertains to NIA's jurisdiction. NIA officers now get the power to investigate offenses committed outside India as well. The third change relates to the special trial courts under the changed bill. Central government can designate session courts as special NIA courts. Congress party suffered major setbacks in the states of Karnataka and Goa. Out of total 15 MLAs, a group of 10 Congress MLAs in Goa, led by leader of opposition in the assembly, Chandrakant Kaulekar, merged with the ruling BJP on 10th July. The Congress, which had emerged as the single largest party after 2017 assembly elections in Goa, is now reduced to just 5 MLAs with this merger bjp's strength has gone up to 27 in the assembly of total 40 members a similar script was played in the neighboring karnataka the coalition government of congress janata dal collapsed after it lost the no confidence motion in the assembly on 23rd july 
A vote of no confidence was moved in the state legislative assembly after 16 MLAs resigned from their membership. Out of these 16, 13 MLAs were from Congress and 3 were from Janata Dal Secular. BJP leader BS Yadurappa is appointed as the next chief minister of Karnataka. At least 200 people have been killed and over 10 million others have been affected by flooding due to torrential rains in Bihar, parts of UP, Assam and other northeastern states. 13 districts in Bihar are hit by the calamity. Worst affected are Sita Marhi, Madhubani, Araria, Darbhanga and Purnia. Situation is even grim in Assam where all 33 districts are flood affected. Assam flood has put the life of wild animals of Kaziranga National Park also in danger. Devastating floods have killed more than 200 wild animals including 17 one-horned rhinos. As the situation develops, these numbers are likely to rise even further. In a major legal and diplomatic victory for India, the International Court of Justice ruled in favor of India in Kulbushan Jadhav case. The court held Pakistan guilty of violating the Vienna Convention because it denied consular access to Kulbushan Jadhav in Pakistani custody. The ICJ at the Hague said Pakistan should provide a review and reconsideration of Kulbushan Jadhav's death sentence. The ICJ judgment was read out by the president of ICJ, Abdul Ahmad Yusuf. The verdict by ICJ put the death sentence awarded to Kulbushan Jadhav by a military court in Pakistan. on hold till the time the case is reviewed after granting consular access to india the 49 year old retired indian navy officer kulbushan jadhav was allegedly arrested in pakistan in march 2016 pakistan claimed that jadhav was arrested from balochistan province of pakistan where he was involved in terrorist and disruptive activities in april 2017 a pakistani military court sentenced jadhav to death India rubbished these charges and condemned military court's verdict. India argued that Pakistan violated the Vienna Convention and Jadhav did not get adequate legal assistance during the trial. India moved to the ICJ in May 2017. The present verdict was delivered by the ICJ in the same case. Boris Johnson officially took charge as the new Prime Minister of UK on 24th July. He defeated his rival Jeremy Hunt to emerge as the leader of Conservative Party. He replaced Theresa May of his own party. Theresa May resigned after her failure to reach a Brexit agreement in the British Parliament. In his victory speech, Johnson promised to deliver Brexit on or before 31st October. Johnson chose his loyalist and pro-Brexit leaders for key cabinet positions. Pakistani origin Sajid Javid has been appointed in charge of country's finances as the new chancellor of Exchequer while Indian origin Preeti Patel is appointed to the powerful position of the home secretary Johnson's rival in the Conservative Party leadership contest Jeremy Hunt was dropped from the cabinet as foreign secretary and has been replaced by Dominic Raab One of the first big issues that Boris Johnson will need to concentrate on is to sort out Brexit, which Theresa May was unable to do during her term. The next category is business and economy. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman presented the first full budget of the Modi government's second term on 5th July. With this, she became the first female finance minister to present a budget. Breaking away from a colonial era tradition, she carried the budget papers in a bahi khata or ledger wrapped in red cloth. Presenting the budget, Finance Minister has projected the economy to grow at a rate of 8 to 8.5% during this year. She also reiterated the vision of making India a 5 trillion dollar economy in the next 5 years. Let us look at some of the major highlights of this year's budget. Union budget made no changes in the personal income tax rates or slabs. However, surcharge rate for individuals with income above rupees 50 lakhs per annum has been hiked very steeply. Surcharge for those with taxable income between 2 to 5 crore rupees is increased from the current 15% to 25% and from the existing 15% to 37% for those with income higher than 5 crores per annum. 
Some relief was provided to the corporate sector with reduction of 5% in the corporate tax rate. Companies with turnover up to rupees 400 crores will now have to pay 25% tax. Mandatory requirement of PAN card for filing income tax return has been removed. Now PAN and Aadhaar card number can be used interchangeably for income tax purposes. Finance Minister announced the proposal of merger of three public sector general insurance companies, namely National Insurance, United India Assurance and Oriental Insurance. A new pension scheme, Pradhan Mantri Karm Yogi Maan Dhan Yojana, was launched for the benefit of small shopkeepers with turnover less than Rs 1.5 crore annually. Another new scheme, Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana, was launched to improve infrastructure for the development of fisheries sector. A new Jal Jeevan mission is launched to achieve the target of Har Ghar Jal or piped water supply to all rural households by 2024. SEBI has been told to consider the proposal of raising minimum public shareholding in the listed companies from 25% to 35%. However, markets gave a big thumbs down to the budget. In a week since the budget, Sensex has lost 1200 points while Nifty had fallen by 390 points. Markets were disappointed by some of the moves in this year's budget. Investors were expecting Finance Minister to roll back long-term capital gains tax on equity investment. But the budget was silent on this matter. The proposal to raise public shareholdings in the listed companies from the current level of 25% to 35% and 20% tax on buyback of shares by listed companies also dampened the mood in the market. In the news from the field of science and technology, India's second moon mission that is Chandrayaan-2 was successfully launched on 23rd July. The mission was launched from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota using indigenously developed rocket GSLV Mark III. Chandrayaan 2 is launched almost a decade after Chandrayaan 1 mission of 2008. Chandrayaan 2 is India's second mission to the moon. It comprises a fully indigenous orbiter, lander named Vikram and rover named Pragyan. The rover Pragyan is placed inside the lander Vikram. The name Vikram is given after Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the founder of India's space program. The Chandrayaan-2 mission was spearheaded by two women scientists from ISRO. Muthaya Vanitha is the project director and Ritu Karidhal is the mission director for Chandrayaan-2 mission. ISRO chairman Dr. K. Sivan congratulated the teams involved in this challenging mission. Along with India's Chandrayaan mission to the moon, the month of July this year was also the 50th anniversary of the first ever human landing on the moon. Exactly 50 years ago, on 20th July 1969, NASA's Apollo 11 mission with astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins landed on moon. Astronauts spent 21 hours on the moon's surface and returned to Earth on 24th July after a 195 hours long journey. The next category is sports news. The 12th edition of ICC Cricket World Cup was played in England from 30th May to 14th July. This was the fifth time that England hosted the tournament. Total 10 teams participated in the event. India lost to New Zealand in the semi-finals, played over two days due to rains. The finals were played at Lords where England beat New Zealand in an exciting final which went down to a super over. New Zealand captain Kane Williamson was declared as the player of the series. Rohit Sharma of India scored the most runs and Michelle Steyr of Australia bagged the most wickets. The next edition of the World Cup will be hosted by India in 2023. This will be the first time that India is hosting the World Cup cricket tournament on its own as on the previous two occasions, in 1987 and 1996, India co-hosted it with Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. In another news from the field of cricket, International Cricket Council has suspended Zimbabwe from the world cricket with immediate effect. With this, Zimbabwe will be out of all ICC tournaments, including the upcoming T20 World Cup. The decision was taken after Zimbabwe breached the ICC constitution by failing to provide free and democratic elections and ensuring that there is no political interference in its cricket administration. 
The decision was announced by ICC Chairman Sashank Manohar. In the news from football, two major tournaments were played this month. USA won FIFA Women's World Cup 2019 title after beating Netherlands in the final. This was the fourth US victory in FIFA Women's World Cup in total 8 editions. And in Copa America Men's Football Championship, Brazil defeated Peru to win the title after a gap of 12 years. Copa America is an international football championship played mainly between the teams from South American continent. The Wimbledon Tennis Championship was played from 1st to 14th July in London. It is world's oldest tennis tournament. Novak Djokovic retained his title by defeating Roger Federer in the final. In women's singles category, a new winner emerged when Shimona Halep of Romania defeated Serena Williams in the finals. The highlight of this month's sporting news, however, were two female athletes from India who created ripples with their performances in the international arena. Hema Das won five gold medals in a span of 20 days in European Championships in Czech Republic and Poland. She won the golds in 200 meters and 400 meter events. On the other side, Duty Chan won India's first ever gold medal in women's 100 meter sprint in World University Games held in Italy. Duty Chan is from Odisha. Both the athletes are now gearing up for World Athletics Championship scheduled in Doha during September October. In the end, let us look at some other miscellaneous news items. Mukesh Ambani led Reliance Industries Limited has become the highest ranked Indian company on Fortune Global 500 list. It has jumped 42 places and is now ranked at 106th place. Reliance replaced Indian Oil Corporation as the top ranked Indian company. Indian Oil is ranked 117th now. Other Indian companies in the list are ONGC at 160th place. State Bank of India at 236th, Tata Motors at 265th, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited at 275th and Rajesh Exports at 495th place. South Korean car maker Hyundai Motors launched India's first fully electric sports utility vehicle named Kona. The car can cover 452 kilometers in one single charge. With this, we have come to the end of this video. We hope you like the coverage of topics in our monthly GK capsules. Kindly drop in your suggestions and feedback in the comment box below. Do also watch our other videos. Happy learning. Thank you.